Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at what I like to think of as the fourth flight. Realistically, this could be a flight number 35 for us as well, but it really depends. Usually when I'm kind of learning how to do all these things, this is kind of the order I do it, so this is kind of where I would be about this time. So what we're going to do today is we're going to be taking a relatively uh, short flight here, and now we're going to be experiencing what it's like to get tower instructions after we get to a particular airport. Now we're currently sitting here, this is Danielson, this is a Kilo Lima Zulu Dulu, uh, Delta Dulu, what's that? And basically, it's a little uncontrolled airport, and uh, right above our heads right now is a pretty large controlled area. So if I actually were to zoom out a teeny tiny bit, you'll notice that this entire zone that I'm in, this is me sitting right there. Well, actually, it's not me. I'll pop in probably right here in a moment. This whole entire area is owned by a Boston Center at the current moment. So what's going to happen is, in, um, in that sim, it's a top-down perspective, which means if I don't have specific control at a given location, so in this case, uh, if Danielson had a controller, and but they weren't present, but there was a controller above them, we have to just treat the controller above them as if they are that controller. I know that sounds a little weird, but it actually works really, really well. It means there's only one person we ever have to talk to. So what we're going to be doing in today's flight, let me go ahead and close this out and grab our thing, is we're basically going to go ahead and reset everything real quick. There's some pretty nasty weather over to the other side of us there, so we're going to try to get in before. So we're going to fly our little flight from Danielson over to Hartford. Now Danielson, like I said, is uncontrolled, and all the airspace around me is actually uncontrolled. The nearest airspace we've got to worry about is actually Providence. We could call them, but we don't really need to because we're not going to enter into their operational zone there. So what we're going to do is we're going to fly along this little route here, and when we get right about here, we're going to call the Boston Center, which remember is owns everything right now, and ask them to land at Hartford as if we were flying into Hartford. This is just a great way to get a little bit of experience. Now, if Hartford had their own um, specific controller at that time, of course, we could talk to them too and say use basically the exact same expression, exact same uh, thing that we're going to be using. So well, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and file a flight plan. Now, technically, we're flying VFR today, even though the weather is uh, less than optimum. And trust me, it is less than optimum. At least it's a little cooler today. So I'm going to go up to the flight plan button. We're going to go ahead and uh, do VFR. We're going to go from where we're starting, which is LZD Danielson. We're going to go into Hartford. Alternate airport today is going to be PVD. I don't know why, but why not? Departure time, I see the current time is 1239 Zulu. So we're going to go ahead and say, uh, just call it 1245 Zulu. Why not? Time on route, uh, as we saw a minute ago, it's going to be about 19. We've got five and a half hours of fuel. Cruise speed's uh, going to be a little bit quicker than that. We could probably get about 120 in this. Cruise altitude, we're going to be traveling to the west today, but there's clouds at 5,000 feet. Uh, 5,000 feet clouds, you got to do the math real quick. Uh, says we could probably do 4,500, but to be safe, I'm just going to do 2,500. Our route, uh, we're going to choose direct, so I'm just going to leave this perfectly blank. And down here in remarks, I'm just going to help people out. Recording. Call YouTube. Just to let people know that, you know, hey, this is just me kind of doing it. So everything looks good. I'll go ahead and I'll throw out my equipment suffix here. Uh, we're technically GPS. So I'm just going to put a G there. I'm not an aircraft, so I'm not going to worry about that too much. Quickly, one, two, three, skip a few. One, two, one, three, do, 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 It looks beautiful. File flight plan. And that's it. So um, since we are VFR and we're in an uncontrolled tower right now, we can just go, which is, I know, a little strange. But if you remember, we have to contact uh, Unicom to let everybody else know what we're doing. So the default frequency for that is 122.8. So I'm going to go on down to here. Go ahead and grab my little tuner here. We'll do 122.8. For some reason, I can only tune down. <laughs> I believe that is a recent bug that somebody has introduced. 122.8. And we're going to flip that on. And while we're at it, we might as well get the Boston Center control frequency as well. Uh, the reason being in this case is you know we're going to have to talk to them. When three four seven hundred, so we're just going to come in here and I'll dial that in as well. Just so that we have it, because we're going to end up having to talk to them as if they were Hartford once we get a little bit closer along the lines here. So one three four seven hundred one two two point eight is going to be our initial little frequency here. Go ahead and bow back out the flight plan page. I'm going to go come down here, press direct two. It's going to say, hey, where do we want to go to direct two? Let me show you a really, really slick trick here. So um, what I'm going to do is instead of coming through and I've uh, taken all this time to do this, I've actually got the GTN 750 installed, which now comes as a separate little pop-up here. So if you want to have to like stress yourself out about having to crank these little knobs to get everything, it's like, don't bother anymore. There's a much quicker, and much easier way to do it. I can just come in here to my map and, you know, I can basically go, whoop, that's okay, flight plan. We can set my origin, which will automatically capture it. This thing's still booting up. Uh, like I said, we're starting at uh, Danielson, our center, and we're setting our destination as Hartford. Now watch that. Woo! It helps if you actually spell things correctly. Who knew? HFD. It should know, right? Boop! And look at that. It automatically updates my G1000 as well, which is super duper because it saves you a lot of trouble. So I'll go back to my map page, change my CDI to GPS, and look at that. Man, that's a lot quicker. So we'll go ahead and dial in our initial altitude here, which is going to be at 2,500 feet. 
come take a quick look around. I don't think anybody's uh, going to bother with us too, too much today, but we were interested in uh, which way the wind is coming. Uh, the wind sock seems to be favoring this particular runway there, so we'll go ahead and uh, do a quick little donut and get us going. A couple RPM. Ooh, my favorite thing to do is to chop up the marshallers. How you doing, guys? Ooh, come get some. <laughs> I'm so mean. <laughs> I've actually been marshaled twice now. It's actually pretty cool. A guy comes out and he gives you these most dirty looks if you don't give him exactly what he wants you to do. It's uh, one of those like, I, 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 I don't know. I'm not an airline, right? I don't know what you're talking about. All right, we're just going to scoot, scoot along here and I'll we'll just make sure that we call. Looks like the wind is behind us. So we're going to go push our controls forward. And as we come into this turn, we're going to tip our controls to the right. We do not want this airplane to uh, go tumbly tumbly on us because, uh, you know, get this weird gust or something. I'm going to go ahead and check my flaps real quick here. Uh, this is a relatively short runway, but it's not a end of the world short runway. So I'm not too, too concerned with it at this time. But if we wanted to, we could, of course, uh, put a notch of flaps in and make it a little bit safer. This airport, by the way, is uh, right next to a technical high school. I always get that quite the kick out of that. And it's just kind of a neat little detail. It's like, oh, imagine airplanes flying in the middle of class. Uh, that could be kind of annoying. All right, rumble, rumble down to the end of the runway here, and uh, we'll get ourselves going. One thing we will have to do on our way is we're going to have to figure out what the weather in Hartford is, but again, that's just all part of the fun is the process. Keep in mind, if you're at like a big mega-controlled tower or something along those lines, uh, we'd basically be at the mercy of whatever they're saying or whatever they're doing, but you'll see exactly what I mean in a moment. All right, here. Uh, let's see here. We got ourselves ooh, runway one tree. Going to go ahead and hold short. We want to make sure our transponder and everything like that is working before we touch that runway. I'm going to go ahead and stick myself right here. It looks pretty good. Give myself a couple more RPM than that. All right, let's go and make sure our transponder is set correctly. So we should be at 1,200, which we are. We should be on altitude mode, which we are. Just checking to make sure that looks good. 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 Timer ref. That looks good. Systems look good. Our initial uh, runway takeoff, like I said, is going to be a runway one tree there, which is going to work out pretty well. So what we're going to do is I just kind of let the local traffic know that we're here and uh, kind of be on our way. Make sure our little V-Pilot is all warmed up. I'll go ahead and switch modes real quickly to hide those things. Danielson traffic. Uh, Cessna Red 64 is taking off runway one tree. Danielson. And that's it. They know we're coming. Pop around this corner. Let's try not to break too many of the traffic lights this time. And we're just going to bring ourselves onto the runway. And remember, there is a controller who's above us right now, but we don't actually technically have to talk to them until we enter into some form of controlled airspace, which, like I said, is going to end up being Hartford's. Now, if we were going a little bit more north, we'd have to talk to him as if he were Bradley, but you'll see exactly what I mean. All right, we're going to get ripping down this here. We're looking for about 55 knots. It's a pretty significant wind. I'm going to hold my controls into it a little bit more. And that looks more than fast enough. There he goes. Just pops up in the air. Ha <laughs> ha. Be on my way here. All right, those uh, trees are looking pretty nasty. I'm actually going to hold my nose up a little bit more than usual here. Again, uh, we have our VX speed for this exact purpose, if this kind of a thing comes up. And now that I think I'm, yeah, I'm roughly clear, I'm going to go ahead and push my nose down and come up to the VY speed. Basically, again, it's going to give us the maximum rate of climb here. No dramatic turns when we are nice and loaded here, because we don't want to do any damage to the airplane. It would be pretty embarrassing to stall or something like that. So now that we're airborne, we could technically call up Boston at any time and basically say, hey, uh, can we get some flight following to our destination here? But again, for this demonstration, we're just going to introduce a little towery piece so we don't have to stress about it too, too much. One thing worth noting, too, is uh, make sure you understand where you're going to. Make sure you know the taxi patterns for where you're going to. These are all things that you probably want to do with airports you're familiar with. You can always ask for permission or clarification or anything along those lines. Inless in traffic. Oop, wrong button. In Austin traffic, Red 64 is at uh, 900 feet, climbing for 2,500, departing to the south into the west of Danielson. Just letting people know where we are. That's all that matters. And we're just going to kind of sneak out in our little direction here. Again, even though there are controllers above us, we, like I said, we don't actually have to talk to them until we get to the point where we have to enter into another guy's airspace. Now, what gets interesting here is what will happen sometimes is a new controller will pop online. And that new controller, what will happen is when they pop online, you have to kind of know that they're there so that you can uh, start contacting them. One of the great things about VATSIM, though, is you have the little instant messaging feature, and people will actually send you a message saying, hey, could you give me a call? I just got online or something along those lines. And again, if we didn't have our flight plan followed, uh, they'd have a much, much tougher time identifying who we are, where we need to be, and everything along those lines. Again, this is just one of those sanity pieces. Now, in the real world, where it gets really interesting is, remember, the place we're going has its own tower controller. It has its own ground controller. But I like it for today's example because it just shows you how the center controllers can work and actually do all the tasks for the centers underneath them. 
kind of feel bad for them because they have to call up like little taxi diagrams and everything like that. Whereas I will be uh, familiar with that particular airport already. All right, gets us right on course on the uh, magenta line of safety. That was a pretty big crash of lightning there. I didn't realize there was any lightning in the forecast. It's much too cold for that today, but hey, anything can happen, right? All right start playing with my trim a little bit here. I feel like I'm all over the sky. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, a little bit of right foot, and we're going to go, don't touch this button. If you touch the autopilot button now, you will be very disappointed. But I will tap the nav button. Now you're probably saying, why didn't you tap that button? Well, the reason I didn't tap that button is as soon as you do it, the nose is going to go thrrr, and basically sunk down. So I'm just going to leave it kind of the way it is right now. That's looking pretty good. I like that. Starts to flash at us. Looks pretty good. Go tap the automatic pilot button. It's going to go thunk and stick my face straight down into things. Altitude's going to capture when we get to 2,500. Man, would I kill for an airplane with a real autopilot? That'd be great. Over there on my left, uh, that's a good old-fashioned Wyndham Airport there. That's kind of neat. Not tower. We could have taken off from there today. But like I said, I wanted to give myself a little bit of wiggly room. Okay, so now let's talk what we need to be concentrating on now. So I'm going to flip back to the other mode real quick. Grab our handy-dandy document. So as you can see, we basically just took off. We're cruising along here. There's that airport I was just talking about a minute ago, right next to that big old reservoir. So what we're going to do is we're going to cruise around. We don't actually have to talk to these folks until we're just about to enter. Remember, as long as they say our... Um, basically say our call sign, we are good to enter this entire zone here. So the trick here in the real world would be to like get about to this point or so and then call them in advance just so they know that we're kind of coming to give them plenty of time if there's other traffic or something. Obviously, their uh, clouds are pretty darn low right now, but the visibility is pretty good. Let's see what the wind is also. That's going to be kind of important for us. Let's see here. Uh, 050 looks like runway 2 today, which is perfectly fine. I like runway 2. Okay, so now let's get ready to contact Boston. Whoop. I guess that 2,500 was a little ambitious. <laughs> In case you just missed it, uh, we can't fly into clouds. Remember, we're under visual flight rules here. So the interesting thing there is uh, what Boston will actually do is they'll give us a call and say, uh, make, make sure you're clear of clouds or something along those lines. So it's just one of those things that you have to kind of be mindful of because uh, we can't do that. Now, obviously, if the clouds get too strong, we can always go back from which we came, which is okay. I believe when you press the altitude button, what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to trap the altitude that you're at. I'm not going to worry about that too much, though. And there we go. Nice. Gotcha. <laughs> so um, apparently it really wants to climb back up. Now, the interesting thing is that because of the most recent patches that they've done, you know, the world update uh, number five and everything like that, it has created some interesting shenanigans and goings-ons in uh, some of the settings here. So some of this does not surprise me. So it's just something you got to kind of keep an eye out for. And if you're on VATSIM, you have to be very confident with your avionics because, you know, if something comes up and you find yourself in a situation where you do have to hand fly the plane, it's going to be kind of a nice thing to be able to go ahead and uh, just sort of grab it real fast there. All right, nose down. I'm just going to go ahead and say vertical speed down. Autopilot, let's try one more time. You got to capture it? Indeed, we got it. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to figure out what the weather at Hartford's going to be because we need to know what the weather code is. So one of the nice things about this uh, handy-dandy chart right here is it actually tells you what the frequency we need to know is. 12645. So I'm going to pop that up here. And we're going to go grab 12645. I'm going to press this button real quick. I'm going to switch to the other one. Boop. One, one, two, six. Like I said, I can only go backwards for whatever reason. Whoops. And I overshot it. I hate it when I do that. One, two, six. And we're going to do four, five. And we're just going to get the ATIS code. This is important because without it, they don't know that we got the weather. Of course, in the real world, they're going to know what the ATIS code was. Let's go ahead and flip on our radio. And let's go ahead and take a listen. Information India. That's the magic word. 
All right, so we know that we have India. I'll go flip back over to this mode, so we're back on that one. So with India, so when we contact the tower controller, what we would do is we'd say where we are and what we want, and we'd know, tell them that we have the weather India. If we don't tell them India, they're gonna be like, did you get the weather? And they're gonna be like, uh, we'll call you back in about two minutes. Okay, so let's get some strategy on here. So we know that we're gonna be using a runway 20. I'll go ahead and zoom out just a teeny tiny bit. And runway 20 is basically going to be kind of this uh, north-south kind of a runway. So we're going to basically rip around the river and kind of come down here. But again, we could even request vectors. So when do we have to call Boston Approach? Well, at this point, we want to start listening. So I'm actually going to go back to my previous radio, and I'm actually going to swap now. So that way we're on the Boston Approach, our Boston Center. So now what we can do with Boston Center is, of course, we can say, treat them as if they were... 1352, turn right heading 010 and intercept the localizer. So he's getting an ILS approach. So we're actually going to descend a little bit because those clouds are going to envelop us real quick. There we go. Losing a little bit of altitude. We're getting a little close to uh, being too close to the ground here. It's one of the dangers of flying when you have clouds like this. Actually, our minimum altitude here is 1600. I'll do 1600 as my absolute minimum here. Cannot go below that. Okay, so when do we call um, Boston and basically ask them nicely for landing in Hartford? Remember, if Hartford had its own tower, we'd talk to them instead. So what we're going to do here is we're basically going to get a certain distance away. We can see we're about 18 nautical miles. I usually like to make the call around between 12 and 15 nautical miles to give them plenty of time to kind of fit us in there. Uh, you know, if you do it a little bit too soon or you do it a little bit too uh, late, obviously it's going to be more difficult for them to work with you. I mean, if you're way too far away, they'll even tell you, call me back later. That's always embarrassing, by the way. <laughs> the uh, foliage which will be turning brown and green and all those other wonderful colors very very soon I said about 15 nautical miles we'll go ahead and ask and at least they'll be able to get us uh, the information they need so this is how it works like always whenever you're doing a call you're always going to say uh, who you're talking to uh, where you are what you want and who you are miles from Nabo maintain 3,000 until established on the localizer clear ILS from a four right bridge maintain 3,000 until the glide and fit the uh, four right ILS because 52 Just listening. Like I said, right around 15 miles, we'll go ahead and do that. So there's a couple different ways we could do that. We could say Brainerd Tower. We could also say uh, Boston Center. We could just say Center. It's kind of up to us. Like I said, once we hit about 15. All right, here we go. Boston Center, uh, Red 6-4 is 15 miles to the east of uh, Hartford Brainerd Airport and requesting a full stop landing at Hartford Brainerd with information, India. Red 6-4, Boston Center, good morning, and a right downwind for runway 2. And your right downwind for runway 2, Red 6-4, thanks. Boston, remember, we'll make trail so what he's just said is he's actually given us runway two, which is exactly not what I expected. But one Mike Charlie fly runway heading runway. So he's asked us to do a right downwind for that particular runway. So zoom out just a teeny tiny bit here. So right downwind, if you take a look, is basically going to be this turn here. So one of the things we can do strategy-wise is rather than coming in and having to take a really sharp turn to enter it, we can actually come a little bit further to the north and come around the kind of the back there. Confirm, clear for takeoff runway nine. American 2264, runway 9 I'm actually going to take myself three degrees to the right here so I can get myself a slightly less bizarre angle that'll be arriving. Alaska 1352, the wind is 080 at 12, runway 4 right, clear to land. Wind should take you to the land 4 right, Alaska 1350. I'm just going to swing to the right just a tiny bit here. Looks good, looks good. All right, I'll see you in a moment. All right, we're about two and a half minutes from our destination. If you actually look really, really carefully, you can see the control tower sitting right here. So uh, believe it or not, the wind is actually fairly strong here. So uh, my effort to try to push us slightly into the north uh, only kind of worked. So uh, what I'm actually going to do is swing a little bit more here. But what I do need to do is to descend down to our traffic pattern altitude, which is right around 1,000 feet, like 1,018. So I'm just going to go ahead and drop this down real quick. Go ahead and say a vertical speed mode. We need to start slowing down anyway. So give myself about 500 feet per minute. 
let throttle back. You know, we really need to start thinking about getting uh, ready for landing here. So what's going to happen most likely is uh, we're going to enter into that right downwind, which again, we're going to whoop like that kind of a thing. And once we've entered into that right downwind turn, what's going to happen is he's probably going to call us back up and he's going to say, you know, clear to land runway two. And I'll be like, clear to land runway two, red six four, and we'll be on our way kind of a thing. But I do want to slow down a little bit more because I'm ripping into this pattern and going really, really fast. And there could be other people here. Now, the neat thing is you can actually see what's left of another airport that was literally across the uh, little uh, river here, which I think is awesome. This part is not the part that stresses me out landing in the real plane, by the way. The part that stresses me out is when you take this last right turn, because if you timed everything perfectly, like you're just at the right height, uh, when you don't time everything perfectly, you come around this corner and you're like doing like 80 and you need to be doing 65. Ah, it'll make you absolutely insane because the real world weather is just so unpredictable. All right, we're getting a little slow here. Alaska 1352, we're off in Romeo. Alaska 1352, taxi via Romeo, join November and cross runway four left. So one of the things we can do is we can actually announce where we are. Romeo, join November, crossing four left, Alaska 1352. Just in case he forgets us, but um, again, he's a busy guy and he controls all of New England, which is an amazing amount of area for one control that they'd be managing here. Just a couple more up, yeah. And we're just going to swing into this right downwind. Looking up my window, and now look at this. Because we decided to come a little to the north, swinging to the downwind is just a matter of a whoopsie daisy. And that's nice and smooth and nice and easy. You don't have to worry about uh, trying to whip the controls around. Boston Center 213 Victor Charlie with you. Uh, flight level approaching, flight level 270. 213 Victor Charlie, Boston Center Squawk 4752. Squawk 4752213 Giving him some time to uh, here, figure out where I am. Boston's tower, Red 64, is in right midfield for two at Hartford Brainerd. Red 64, the wind 060 at 7, runway 2, clear to land. Runway 2, clear to land, Red 64. Yeah, there it is. That's all you had to do. 1552 on November, cross runway 15 left and hold short of runway 15 right. Big ol' number two. Crossing uh, 15 left and holding short on the right, Alaska 1352. All right, let's go ahead and get this plane nice and dirty. Oh, you dirty, dirty plane. No, just kidding. All right, let's get ahead and on down here. Look at that window. We're getting pulled in a little bit here. I think this wind is not exactly conducive to this runway, but hey, you gave us instructions and we gotta follow them. Back to my right a little bit here. About ready for the base leg. All right, looks pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and take our turn. In the real world, this is a beautiful church right off your nose. Uh, so when you take this turn, you can just go point right at the church and know that you're nice and square with the runway. But in this case, uh, we're just kind of going to have to pretend it's there. Those, by the way, are, oh, the, yeah, the church would be right there. So I'm just going to kind of accept that as being roughly where it should be. Ah, oh, jeez, cannot find this base leg without being able to look out that window. One, three, Victor, Charlie, radar contact, five south of Merritt. Uh, descend and maintain flight level 210. That is the highest altitude allowable between Boston, uh, New York and Boston. All right, let's bring it on in. Understood, down to flight level 210. 213, Victor, Charlie. We're nice and high because uh, we took that way too tight, but that's right. Now, if you want some interesting trivia, one of the instrument approaches under this runway is um, at, it says at nighttime you're not allowed to land with uh, two reds and two whites on the pappy because if you did that, you'd smack into the tree. That was a sloppy approach. Let's see if we can get our landing a little bit smoother then. Yeah, we definitely got a really bad crosswind. 1043, ready for taxi. American 1043, squawk uh, 4604. There's no break in the trees, by the way, there. It's just all trees. 4604, the box, American 1043. Azores 326, radar contact 110 miles east of Mill, present west of Mill and Nocket. Climb and maintain flight level 330. Climb maintain 330, Azores 326. American 1043, runway 9 or taxi via Alpha, Kilo, Mike, cross runway 4 left. Remember, he's got to control all of New England. Yeah, I can't land that smoothly in the real world. <laughs> you get 10 inches off the ground, all of a sudden the plane goes, whoa, whoa. Kilo, Mike, cross runway 4 left, American 1043. Go ahead and uh, swing us over this way. 
And once we're clear of the runway, we'll go ahead and give him a call again and say request taxi to the gate. Uh, one of the downsides is, and this is a Microsoft Flight thing more than it is anything, all the taxiways are Alaska, 1350 incorrectly. The, uh, November I'll park myself right here, clear the runway, hit the brake. Cross runway one. Let's go ahead and get ourselves a diagram so like, when we make the call, we can make the right call. Right in November, continue November, Bravo, hold short of Charlie. Alaska. All right, let's take a look here. So uh, when we got off the runway, we are on Charlie. So we're gonna request a uh, taxi to the north ramp. Boston Center, uh, Red 64 is on Charlie. Request taxi to the north ramp at Hartford. Red 64, taxi to parking this frequency, good day. Exit parking this frequency, thanks for your help. That's it. Virgin one. So it's a taxi to parking, so he's not giving me the specific instructions, which is okay because literally to get the parking, we're just going to go straight across, which is uh, awesome. We're just going to sneaky sneak. See, I never get off at this one. I always end up getting off at this one. And once we cross this line, we're out of the control zone. And that's it. We did it. All right, so hopefully this uh, video has uh, been helpful as far as uh, doing. Let me actually uh, mute him for a second here. So hopefully this video has been helpful as far as uh, showing you how it's not too bad. Again, remember the center controller owns everything underneath it. And since this was a towered airport in the real world, he technically owns the tower to it. Now I've got myself in a position I can't get the airplane past the traffic here. Whoops, but that's all right. So anyway, hopefully you guys uh, enjoy this video. Like I said, uh, VATSIM's not that bad. I think I had to say three things the entire flight, and I still got a really realistic, well, semi uh, authentic experience. Enjoy.